Hello students, let's do congruency. Congruent triangles exercise 21. Before we begin our exercise, let's study what congruency is. Now figures are said to be congruent when they have the same size and shape and if one figure is placed over the other, they will coincide exactly. So they should have the same size and shape and when they are placed one on top of the other, they must coincide exactly. Now here we have two shapes, we have two lines. Now let's see what may we mean. Now look at these two shapes, triangles, they are exactly the same size and the same shape. Now if I place this one on top of this triangle, will they coincide exactly? Let's see. Okay, as you can see, they have coincided exactly. That means those two triangles are congruent shapes or congruent triangles. Now let's take another example. Look at these two shapes. They are the same size, same shape. Now let's see if they coincide when they are placed over each other. So let's do this. So here also, as you can see, they are coinciding exactly. That means those two shapes are congruent. Now here we have two lines and let's see if these two lines, when they are placed one on top of the other, they will coincide exactly. Yes, as you can see, they have also coincided. That means they are congruent lines. So this is the meaning of congruency. They have the same size, same shape and when they are placed over the other, they will coincide exactly. So let's study about congruent triangles. This exercise is on congruent triangles. So here we have two triangles. Now they are exactly the same size. Now as you can see they have three sides. Now there is AB, BC and CA for this triangle. For this triangle DE, EF and FD. Now there are strokes here. What do these strokes mean? There is one stroke here and look at the other triangle. There is a, this one stroke for this side. That means this side is equal to this side. That means AB is equal to DE. Now here there are two strokes and here there are two strokes. That means BC is equal to EF. Here we have 3 and 3. That means AC is equal to DF. So we are talking about the sides. So these three sides are equal to each other. Now here we have the symbol for angles. So here there is one curve to show that this angle and this angle with that one curve are equal. That means angle A is equal to angle B. Now look at the two curves here. Angle B and two curves for angle E. Angle B is equal to angle E. Here we can see three curves. That means angle C is equal to angle F. So right now they are the same shape. They are the same size. Now do they coincide? If they coincide, that means when you place one triangle on top of the other, if they are exactly coinciding with each other, then they are called congruent triangles. So let's see that. Yes, can you see that? They are coinciding exactly. You can see the vertices also. They have coincided exactly. So angle, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. So we had two triangles. Now they are the same shape same size and when they are placed one on top of the other, they are coinciding exactly. So you can say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. Now here, these are the sides that are equal. AB is equal to DE, BC is equal to EF and AC is equal to DF as we saw. Now, this is another way of showing. This is the symbol for congruency. So instead of using the words congruent, you just have to put this symbol. So this shows that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. Now there are conditions of congruency. When do you say that two triangles are congruent? Now there are five conditions. So let's look at the first condition. So in the con first condition, we are looking only at the sides of a triangle. That is, if three sides of one triangle are equal to three sides of the other triangle, each to each, as we saw in the first example, then the two triangles are said to be congruent. So this is the first condition where we're only talking about sides. So here we have two triangles 
A, B, C and D, E, F. Now we are talking about the sides. So the three sides are there. If these three sides are equal to these three sides, that means we say that two triangles are congruent. So here we have one stroke, one stroke. Then we have two and two, three and three. So this condition is known as side, side, side or SSS for you just take the first letter of each word. So the first condition of congruency is two triangles are said to be congruent based on SSS. That means three sides are equal. As you can see, AB is equal to DE, BC is equal to EF and AC is equal to DF. The three sides are equal. Now, because it's equal, now we say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF by which condition? By SSS or side, side, side. So you have to mention by which condition you have proved that these two triangles are congruent. So the first condition is three sides. Now in congruent triangles, the corresponding angles are also equal. So when you have triangles which are congruent, even the corresponding angles like angle A is equal to angle D, angle B is equal to angle E and angle C is equal to angle F. Angle A and angle D are equal, angle B and angle E are equal, angle C and angle F are equal. So this is the first condition of congruency. Now second condition of congruency. If two sides, now we're talking only about two sides and the included angle, that means the angle between these two sides. So I'll read that again. If two sides and the included angle of one triangle if they are equal to two sides and the included angle of the other triangle, again each to each, that means coinciding, then the two triangles are said to be congruent. So again we have two triangles here. Now here we are talking about two sides and the included angle. So look at this triangle, angle ABC. There are two sides. Angle AC is 4 centimeters and angle AB is 5 centimeters. Included angle means the angle that is between the two sides, that is angle A, I'm not talking about this angle, not angle B, because the two sides are here. And included angle means the angle that comes between those two sides. So here we have two sides and an included angle. Now let's look at this triangle, triangle D, E, F. Here we have two sides, 5 centimeters and 4 centimeters, and angle E, which is an included angle. If these two sides of this triangle are equal to the two sides of this angle and the included angle is equal to this included angle, then you say that the two triangles are congruent. Okay, so here let's see. This condition is now known as side, angle, side or SAS. Side, included angle, side. So this is known as SAS, the second condition. Here AC is equal to DE, then AB is equal to DF and triangle BAC, BAC, we have put A in the middle because that is where the angle is, BAC is equal to triangle DEF. So two sides and one included angle, if this condition is satisfied, then what do we say? Triangle BAC is congruent to triangle DEF by SAS, by this condition. Then in this case, what are the pairs of corresponding sides? So we have AB and EF because both are 5 centimeters. Then we have AC and DE. AC, DE, both are 4 centimeters. Then we have BC and DF, DF here. So they are the corresponding sides. Now what are the corresponding angles? Angle A and angle E. Then we have angle C and angle D. Then we have angle B and angle F. So these are the pairs of corresponding sides and the pairs of 
corresponding angles. Condition 3. Here you are talking about two angles and one included side. That should be equal to two angles and the included side of the other triangles. Then you say that they are congruent. So here we have two triangles. So as you can see we have angle B with two curves and angle E with two curves. That means B and E are equal. Then we have angle C with one curve and angle F with one curve. That means C and F are equal. Now what do we mean by included side? Included side means the side which is between these two angles. Not the side, not the side, but this side because it's between these two angles. So we have B, C and E, F which are equal. So this is the third condition of congruency. So we say this condition is known as angle side angle or ASA angle side angle or ASA so BC is equal to EF so one side the included side they are equal and angle B is equal to angle E angle C is equal to angle F so we say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF by ASA this condition that is angle side angle. This is the third condition of congruency. The fourth condition of congruency is if any two angles and a side. We already had two angles and a side but this time the side is not the included side of one triangle. If that is equal to two angles and the corresponding side of the other triangle then the two triangles are said to be congruent. Okay so here we have two triangles angles triangles ABC and triangle DEF. Now here we are talking about two angles. Look at angle C with one stroke and angle F with one curve, both with curves. So here angle C is equal to angle F. Now look at angle B with two curves and angle E with two curves, the symbol of an angle. That means angle B is equal to angle E. Now look at this line AC. It has a single stroke. And angle DF has a single stroke that means these two lines are equal to each other but as you can see they are not the included side that means they are not in between E and F. If they are in between these two angles we call it an included side but as you can see they are not these two lines are not in between the, the angles so they are not the included side but even then if any two angles and one side is equal to the other two angles and one side of the other triangle, that means they are congruent triangles. So in this case, we say the condition is known as angle, angle, side. So we take the first angle, the second angle and the side or A, A, S. So here in this case, angle B is angle equal to angle E. Angle C is equal to angle F. AC is equal to DF. So we are talking about two angles and a side. That's why it is angle, angle, side. So we can say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF by the condition A, A and S. Now we are going on to conditions of congruency, the fifth condition. So according to this, if the hypotenuse and one side of a right angle triangle. So the fifth condition is based on a right angle triangle and we are talking about the hypotenuse. If the hypotenuse and one side of a right angle triangle are equal to the hypotenuse and one side of another right angle triangle, then the two triangles are said to be congruent. So let's have a look. So here we have two triangles. Triangle ABC is a right angle triangle as you can see at B and it has two sides. This is the hypotenuse AC. Now here the other triangle is triangle DEF which is right angled at E. Now here the hypotenuse has three strokes here because and this is the hypotenuse because it's opposite the 90 degree triangle. So it's opposite the 90 degree angle. So AC is the hypotenuse. In this triangle, DF is the hypotenuse because it is opposite angle E. Now, if the hypotenuse of this triangle is equal to the hypotenuse of this triangle, 
are they equal yes there are three strokes here and three strokes here that means they are equal and one side so this one side that is bc it has two strokes and here also the corresponding side is de it has two strokes that means these two sides are equal and they are right angles so we say that these two triangles are congruent so how do we say the condition this condition is known as right angle hypotenuse side or rhs right angle hypotenuse side so this condition is known as rhs so here we have angle b is equal to angle e you can see that here then bc is equal to de and hypotenuse ac is equal to hypotenuse df so we have a right angle triangle we have one side and we have the hypotenuse which are all equal to each other so we say that triangle abc is congruent to triangle def by the condition r h and s we will stop with this for now children in our next video we will begin with the exercise thank you children